My name is Mark and I'll be your uh, instructor for this World Religions course. And uh, I think it's gonna be kind of fun. I think, I think you'll enjoy it. Now, I, I just wanna get one thing straight right off from the start. And that is, this is not a philosophy of religion course. Now, in a philosophy of religion course, what you'd study is things like, oh, proofs for the existence of God or the linguistic structure of religion. Like when you use the word God, what exactly do you mean when you use it? We won't be studying that kind of stuff. So this course is basically about an introduction to the practices, uh, some of the rituals, and uh, some of the gods and goddesses that are involved in these religions. And we'll have eight different religions that we'll go through. Now, it's absolutely critical that you have this book. Now, there's a couple of these out by the same guy, this Hudson Smith, made a bundle with this book. And one of them has like pictures and that kind of thing in it. And in order to put the pictures in, they cut out some of the text. So this is the one that I would like you to have. And if you can't afford it, and it's about 15 bucks, you can uh, maybe check your local library, places like that, and you might be able to find it. So critical, you have this book. Let me tell you about the basic approach of the course. What you do. Each week, you'll have three basic things that you'll do. One is, you'll read a chapter from this book. You'll read a chapter. The next one that you'll do is, I'm going to send out each week a holy text for you to summarize. So you'll do a summary of that text. And some of them are pretty difficult, I gotta tell you. So if I send out, oh, the Bhagavad Gita, let's say, and you have chapter five, I get it that you're not reading the whole book, that it, you're gonna be reading something a little out of context. Totally get it. All I'm asking you to do is summarize it the best you can. The idea is that when you start to look at these holy books, some of them sound a little different than other ones. And I just want you to get it sort of a feel for it. So you can go ahead and write things like, ah, this was really a tough read for me. I didn't really understand. Here's what I think I did get out of this book. And then you give that little summary. And I like it to be about two paragraphs. And the last thing you'll do is you'll have a discussion. That says discussion. And the discussions, I'm going to give another video on those on what you do. So here's the basic things that you'll be doing each week. Nice. Looks like it's gonna be fun already. Let me just take a second here and erase this. Now, let's talk about the basic approach. First of all, religion. How in the heck do you define religion? And believe me, the scholars have been trying like crazy. I've seen in most texts about five different definitions. So then would you say, well, what finally makes a religion? For example, let's say, does it have a God? Does it have to have a God in order to be a religion? And actually, no. Uh, some parts of Buddhism don't have a God. Confucianism doesn't have a God. Does it still count as a religion? So if there's lots of different definitions for religion, maybe that's the definition, is it has a whole lot of definitions to it. And I'm not gonna put one out here for you because we're gonna sort of explore what each one has to tell us. And when we go through each one of these religions, here's how I'm gonna approach it. I'll first ask the question, does it have a God? If it does, what kind of God or goddesses does it have? And here's the structure I'm really going to hit, is three basic things. I'm going to suggest that every religion first has a problem, then it has a solution, and then it has access to that. Is that Two C's in access? Thank you. That was God that was just speaking to me, telling me access has two C's. All right, so let's just take, um, most people are familiar with Christianity and I'll just run through this one. We're gonna do it again in the Christianity uh, video. But for example, the problem in Christianity seems to be the concept of sin. 
The solution seems to be salvation. And access to this tends to come through a person, the person and God of Jesus. So you see how it kind of works? Oh, can you see me now? Can you see me now? Is each one of these will have a problem, and I'll set out the problem, the solution, and then the access to the solution. That's going to be our general approach for each religion. Let me get rid of this. I'd like to give you some basic definitions to kind of get us off and rolling in the world of religion. Because as you know, each sort of field of endeavor has their own linguistic structure. And let me just put some of the words down. I'm sure you'll be familiar with most of them. One of them is theism. Theism just means you believe in a God. Atheism. You probably have all heard that word before too. It means you don't believe in a God. Agnostic. That sort of means you're on the fence with the whole thing and maybe you could be convinced that there isn't a God or there is a God. How about this one? Polytheism. Polytheism means lots of gods. Monotheism. That means gods have been kissing each other and they got sick. Mono. Monotheism is one God. How about this one? Pantheism. Pantheism is kind of interesting. It sort of means that there is like this world soul and everything is kind of all one big God. So you could include like trees and the monkeys. I don't know where that came from. Uh, animals, humans, all of it is like sort of one big idea of God. And here's one that's kind of interesting that kind of hedges that one. It's called pan in theism. This one's kind of interesting. So it's the idea that God is kind of present in some way in the world in which we are, but it's like it's a, a piece of him that's not connected to him. Uh, let's see, it would be like, this is going to be a terrible example. When I spit, the spit is from me, but it's not me. And it's, and no, I'm not trying to say that the creation is like God's spit. What I'm trying to say is that it's like somehow informs us of him in some way. So these are some of the basic ideas when we start to talk about uh, religion. When people talk about God today, I want to give you a general definition of what they're talking about. So, the definition of God tends to be something like this today. He is, and they're called the omnis. He's omniscient. He's omnibenevolent. Did I spell that right, God? What? So should there be an E right here? Huh, God doesn't know, I guess. And another one is he's omni, omnipotent. <laughs> this one means he's all knowing. This one means he's all loving. This one means he's all powerful. And those are the omnis. So, generally speaking, this is a, a working definition of the concept of God. I think I've nailed it.